but it's just another year. You knew to disrespect my your elected puppeteers, but let me show you how to persevere. What's going on, everybody? Sorry that we're a little late. Or, oh, excuse, not even a little late, very late. Uh, we almost canceled the show, but we had some issues with our browser trying to go live. So, I'm a, it's going to be a short show. We're going to probably still end like shortly after 9.15, maybe 9 o'clock. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so we won't waste too much time. Um, if the camera looks so funny, sorry. Uh, we'll get it right by next week. So, just we have to try to update some stuff to make it look better. And anyways, ran into some difficulties here. If you don't know who I'm playing, it's Erica Badu. On and on. This is from her Baduism album, came out back in 97. February 11th to be exact. Yeah, February is a great month. Um, if y'all don't know why I was playing Erica Badu, last night something historic went down. Jill Scott versus Erica Badu on Versus. That was pretty amazing. Me and Kat had a good time in the house enjoying that joint. It was pretty dope. Um, and there was still a whole bunch of songs they didn't play. So, you know, that was interesting, right? Uh, there was so much content they could have played, and they actually didn't play all of it. So, I mean, it was a lot of good work out there they could have covered, but, I mean, I enjoyed it. It didn't even feel like a competition. It felt like a, a live, like, show with just some dope music, you know? It, to me, it felt like more about the live celebration. Yeah. So, I mean, I was definitely feeling it. It was a, it was a good time. Um, I like that it wasn't competitive, and it was more about no. storytelling and about how Jill was... Saying how Erica paved the way for her, how she wrote her song, and Erica sang her song. Um, she sang um, the one with the roots. Um, um, I can't think of the song right now. Messing with all this technical stuff. Oh, if you zap my brain. Yeah, I can't think of the song. Let's do it, my homies, baby. Don't worry, you know that you got me. Something like that. I haven't yeah. got the words all the way messed up, but yeah. But anyway, Jill wrote that for Erica, and then Erica wrote Jill's a song too, and I can't even think of the name of that one. That was cool. I never even knew that. So yeah, I can't even think of. Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but um, it was oh, Long Walk was the one that Erica wrote for uh, Jill Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that that was dope. pretty dope. Um, also, in some current news, hey, what's going on, Lana? Yeah, we're a little late today, boo. Had some uh, technical difficulties with our browsers. Maybe what's good? We got KC Clarksville in the building. Um, so yeah, um, on to some more current news. Um, Gabrielle Union um, says that minorities are hurting more in Hollywood living check to check. Um, I guess they're saying that Corona and then the lack of work going on because of people trying to practice social distancing is actually, uh, made me say you sing. Uh, Trey the Prophet, what's good? Um, but anyways, they're saying that black people... Oh, she said, she was joking, she said she didn't write Long Walk, FYI. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. I, I thought she was serious at first. Thank you, Lana, for letting me know. Dope. Um, but yeah, um, Gabrielle Union was saying that black celebrities are actually hurting more from this, you know, living more so check to check. And she's saying that disparities in the income is part of the issue. Um, so I felt two ways about that. Okay. One is going to be unpopular. Let me get across an unpopular opinion. It's like, but you a celebrity though. And they're like, she talked about how they can't pay for their things. And if those things include a house that was too big for two people in the first place <laughs> or a large car you don't really need. Anytime you're living like above your means, because a lot of celebrities, not just black ones, all of them live above their means. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I can't, I don't know how, I don't know, like. Oh, that's fool. Oh, what's up, fool? What's good, bro? Trade a profit. Okay. It's, it's not, all this time, I didn't realize this was fool. Fool's one of my homies from um, Xbox, y'all. The games. And, yeah, the game. Yeah, the games rule supreme. So, but yeah, like, I don't know if I feel bad for celebrities when they live above their means and they can't pay for all their stuff. It's like, you know, maybe you should live just below the mark. I don't know. But at the same time, uh, if it's because they're not being paid what they're supposed to be paid, and there's inequity there, then yeah, of course, it's like, yo, we need to do something better about that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, it is one of those subjects. I don't know how I feel. I got to do some more investigation. Um, also, in current news, Murder Hornets. So I'm pretty sure the Wu-Tang Clan is excited about that. But outside of music, uh, Murder Hornets do sound kind of scary. Uh, they said they're actually immigrating from Asia um, across the Pacific somehow. How, but how is that possible? 
I mean, I guess they got mad flight time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you got to think, there's like small islands across the way. Um, I guess maybe wind, stuff like that might be able to blow them. In. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, so that's my, not, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. So my theory, and I said this to Juan before, and he was like, you might be right. I think a lot of like diseases and pathogen, one, I think it's biblical, right? If you subscribe to the Bible, they talk about all this stuff happening. Say it's not possible. So I think that it's biblical of what's going on, what's transpiring in today's um, age. And secondly, I think because of global warming, I feel like some of the diseases that may have been frozen or some of the animals or different type of whatever that may have been frozen for a long time, I feel like now are emerging. I know that sounds crazy, right? Yeah, but I mean, something's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on in 2020. 2020, 2020 is wilding. A lot of, from KC said, a lot of people live above their means to me. I mean, banks need a bailout. So, well, exactly, right? I mean, all these, you know, everybody, like, everybody, everybody is hurting right Yeah, now. exactly. Everybody is hurting. Uh, 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 Trade the Prophet, a.k.a. Fool, said that uh, no insect is traveling across the ocean. I feel you, bro. Um, but, <laughs> he basically saying, "Why well, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then Lana said, to your point, it's not crazy. She agreed with you. Um, so, look, let's, because we are running a little late. So, let's jump right into our main topic uh, today. Uh, two main things. Obviously, you know, we're going to be covering uh, Ahmaud Arbery. Um, and we want to go into some of the themes that I think this is bringing out in society. And then, but the, before we get to that, um, just quick thoughts on the VP nomination. Biden still hasn't nominated somebody to be his running mate. Um, his VP, um, and there's a lot of competition going on. A lot of women in general just say, "Look, get Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris or Klobuchar." Um, Latinx is saying that he should bring on someone like um, um, Julian Castro or you know someone Spanish. But then, of course, a lot of black women are saying, "Look, you promised already that you would have a black woman running mate, so they want to see Kamala Harris or Stacey Abrams." Which not Kamala, not Kamala. But a lot of people. I'm just saying what people in general. Kamala. Oh, what's up, Elisa? I want to see Stacey because Stacey got that natural air. She got that gap. She's comfortable with her weight. She knows where, where it's at. Stacey has a track record of really being for the people. Kamala's track record is a little bit skeptical, on my, in my opinion. So it's interesting. So I'm curious. I'll be curious to see who you guys would be would like to see as a, you know, uh, running mate. Um, so Lana said, why not Kamala? Because Kamala was a, was um, prosecuting a lot of black men back in the day. And I, I'm not going to blame Kamala for that action. As we know, a lot of times when it comes to moving up in law firms, it's about how many cases you win. But I am of the mind that if you're really down for black people, you're not going to prosecute them just because it's going to benefit your career. You're going to do what's right for justice. And because of that, I have issues with Kamala. She, she, was, she was a large part of some of the prosecution behind some of the cases in California. And that bothers me. Yeah, so um, also for my um, IG audience, uh, Trey, yo, shout out um, Illwi in the building. Um, but anyways, uh, he said that they bringing them little myrtle bastards over uh, over here. They're um, also because of global warming, the icebergs are releasing old uh, diseases. You were saying that earlier mm -hmm. that were trapped inside of them as well. I can't recall where I read that. But yeah, no, I've seen the same thing that you put out there, uh, Trey. So that's what's up. Um, she says Stacey may not have a high public profile. That's my word. And that's what I like. I like and, that, um, she that also she did, she did bring out the fact that Lana also is bringing up the fact that Kamala does have a white husband too. Does that matter? I mean, not really. I just like Stacey. Something about her disposition seems very authentic to me. And I'm kind of happy she doesn't have a high profile because I feel like, it, 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 well, they're probably going to look for something. But I feel like, I don't know, Stacey just seems like she's pure at heart. I don't know. I get no, good she, she, I would be cool I without the one of them. I do want him. If he's going to say a thing, he needs to do a thing. That's do how it, I feel about it. it. You know? Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to rush a little bit along only because we did come on late, guys. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. Um, typically, we use Chrome browser. Chrome browser wasn't working without our camera. I don't get it. We're on Firefox, but everything is working. <laughs> um, if you guys are seeing less delays on Facebook, let me know because then I'll continue with the Firefox. I won't fix the Chrome situation. Um, Christopher said yeah. Biden doesn't need to secure the black vote. He got it by default. Well, well that's true. I mean, that, that's a, was, I, I mean, I don't know if he does. He was Barack. Barack. I know I'm not going to vote for Barack. Trump. So, yeah, he's kind of got my vote. But I just want to make sure that 
he does things legislatively that's going to support my vote. You know, I just don't want to be voting in vain. Chris said, I'd be surprised if he chooses a black running mate. He needs to choose one, though. Does he say he's going um, to Soba used to say Kamala's campaign staffers uh, were very unhappy with her. Uh, that's interesting. So did Hillary. Interesting. Uh, Trey said, plus scientists are playing doctor with diseases as well. Got to understand Big Pharma is a multi-billion dollar business as they need and they want as many sick and hurt people as as well. That's true. Just kind of talking about like the, the murder hornets and mm -hmm. what we're doing with Corona. Good point. Um, so let's move on to the next thing. Y'all know a lot. Y'all know what I'm itching to talk about. Right? Go for it. And, um, I've been blown. I think some of you see my person. For those that might see know me personally. I ran as well to support Ahmad, um, hashtag I run with Mod. Um, a lot of runners and fitness people out there did that, so shout out to all of you that did. Uh, but for if you don't know what's going on, right, um, Ahmad uh, Arbery uh, was shot by two white men, killed, murdered, um, Gregory J. Michael and Travis J. Michael out there in Georgia. Um, he was running, minding his business. They actually called the cops, I believe it was Michael that called. Uh, sorry, Gregory that called. He called the cops to report him for running because he said he looked suspicious. And he said that I and he had thought processes saying that he believed that this young black man that was running was tied to a string of burglaries in the neighborhood. Um, they then from there and, he, and even um, the uh, dispatcher that he's talking to was like, OK, well, I can't send police out there unless you describe to me what he's doing wrong. Exactly. He can never describe something wrong. Or what looks suspicious. He's a he just nigger. Saw man, yeah, he just saw He's a black nigger, man running. and I ain't never seen a nigger run in this neighborhood. So then. That is what's doing wrong. So then uh, he proceeded to say, okay, well, because he doesn't like the fact that this guy is doing it, he didn't like the fact that the dispatcher wouldn't send police out, <laughs> he took it upon himself and his son. They hopped in their truck and they chased after him. They tried to cut him off multiple times. And they were yelling at the window, hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, I want to talk to you. Now, for those that don't understand, one, if I'm running him out of my business, I, you don't have to talk to me about anything. That's just one. But then the second part, just to help you guys to paint the picture, I'm a runner. When I'm running, when you talk about four or five plus miles, and just the fact that people don't want to move out the way in the sidewalk, that's annoying. I can only imagine how frustrated Ahmad was having these two men yell at him, accost him, and then continue to cut him off as he's trying to run. Running is hard, folks. It's hotter in Georgia than it is here, and even I feel some heat when I'm trying to run. By the time you break mile three or four, it is hot outside, no matter what the weather is, okay? And you get frustrated when you have added obstacles that don't need to be there. So... This whole altercation between them, you got to understand, no human wants to deal with that, mm -hmm. first of all. And then these guys start bothering him, like Kat said, because they look at him, they profile him, they don't feel like he has the right to run, right? And they start this altercation, and under citizen arrest laws, they're able to hide this thing from February 23rd when he dies up until just a week ago when the video went viral. And the crazy thing about it, we're finding out that the video went viral because I guess their defense attorney got the video like an idiot. I guess I don't know. He watched it. Thank God for his uh, his stupidity, because now we're able to see clearly this is an issue. They, so they got um, arrested not because they had the video. They got arrested because we saw the video. Yeah, I seen that meme out there. And it's true, though. Uh, Lana, let me read a quick point. Lana said that listen to the mod case. Minorities need to run and vote for DA, local judges and sheriffs, etc. Exactly. We've been saying that for I don't know how long. That's why we need to be involved in local elections, right? That's why even if you don't believe in it federally, which you still should vote because someone that came before you believed in it. But with all, if all else fails, you should at least vote locally because that's how we get some of these bigots out of these offices. So, so Juan, Lana, Elisa, people who are watching, how do you encourage and create the incentive for people to get involved and want to vote or to even be fired about social justice? I've been reading a lot of different profiles on Facebook and people are basically saying, look, I don't care about this. I got to deal with my own family. It's depressing. I'm not really into politics. 
and a lot of people who look like us or don't look like us turn a blind eye because it's not at their doorstep. So how do we get people to see the importance of getting involved? And um, so Mamie said vote. Just well, yeah, but that's the question is how do you get people to vote? Well, I don't care. I think people just need to start caring, right? Um, so there is a lot of people that you have to, first of all, understand the law and how it applies to you. So let's talk about some laws as people are like writing answers. Two laws that are an issue right now is citizen arrest laws and stand your ground laws. It's because of these laws primarily while some of these vigilante racists have gotten away with what they got away with. The reason why it took two months for them to even be locked up and the reason why George Zimmerman is out there acting the whole donkey. Somebody needs to punch him in his whole face. Okay? Just being honest about it. Uh, yo, what's up? Word to my mother. Um, somebody needs to punch him in his whole face. And the reason why he's getting away with murder, literally, Trayvon's killing, and then agitating the public with signing Skittles and Arizona iced teas and being as disrespectful as he possibly can is because of a stand your ground law. Now, Stand your ground laws exist in everywhere between Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Louisiana, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, Pennsylvania. Over 40 states have stand your ground laws and citizen arrest laws. Now, we don't have them here in Maryland. Um, I don't think they have them in New York as well. A lot of your super liberal places typically don't have them, but some of them do, i.e. New Hampshire does have stand your ground and citizen arrest laws. And the problem with these laws um, I was just talking to um, my dad the other day, and he described it as a dog whistle to racism, right? And if you look at the origin of these stand your ground and the citizen arrest laws, they stem from a time of slavery and segregation. That's what empowered white men or white women to actually um, kill and track down and hunt people of color even after um, the Emancipation Proclamation. So... We have to do something about these laws, and I think the reason why people get frustrated, why they feel like, what's the incentive to vote? Because we don't have a plan of action or a written agenda as to what we're attacking. We say general things like, oh, we want justice. Well, what does justice look like? What does justice mean for you? And when you start understanding the laws that are in place and how we can benefit you, the voter, I think that's how you get people energized to do something. And then you have to stay in front of your local officials and, and challenge them to do something about these laws that will make a difference. You feel me? Uh, we got some uh, comments. Um, Christopher said, that's important. Um, that's important because most social justice community engagement initiatives are not targeted at getting us involved. Good point. Um, Lana said, tell them that it's not political and say it does affect you. Ask them what triggers them when they see videos. Um, then say if you have any emotional response, it affects you. Good point. Um, Chris also said, not because of maliciousness, but it's just a matter of not being on the agenda. Good point. Um, Lana also says that, um, listen, we have them here in open carry. Um, true. Uh, Chris said, uh, if we're in a position of leadership, we can add agenda items and elevate others. Good point. Also, Herman said, stand your ground law, dog whistle laws to kill blacks. Yes, Juan, great points. So, this is how we get involved. You should know who your congressman is. Your, not just your federal congressman, but then who rep represents you in the state house as well. Because, um, for instance... Um, I was talking to my cousin, Andre, who works with the Robert White um, campaign. We were talking about it. You know, Maryland doesn't have dog whistle laws. D.C. doesn't have dog, the, those kind of uh, stand your ground and citizen arrest laws. But that's why you have to get involved at the national level because it does affect someone like you. Um, you have made a good point about people. We were talking about this earlier about people who don't really care about it until it happens to them. Well, yeah, most people, it's like if, if my brother were to have something happen to him or my husband or my friend or uncle, then I want all of the black community to corral behind me and support. But generally, if it doesn't happen at my footstep or my front door, it's like, well, you know, I'm worried about me and my home, me and my own people, and y'all got to deal with what y'all got to deal with. But my thing is we keep saying get involved. We keep saying year after year, know who your politicians are, know who your political leaders are, and it doesn't happen. And then I say, well, maybe we should try to make the charge 
for people who are prominent in the community, i.e. celebrities. And then people tell me that's ridiculous, Cat. You can't put that charge on people. They're not even they're not even politically um, motivated themselves. And so we keep going in circles. And so at this point, I can admit to you guys that I'm kind of um, tired of talking about it, if it makes any sense. Like, I feel like we talk about the same thing year after year. People need to vote. We know that. People need to get involved. We know that. People need to know who their politicians are. We know that. And they just don't do it. And if celebrities aren't going to have the charge to push this agenda forward or we don't have any leaders to push the agenda forward, then for me, I'm, I guess I'm tired of talking about it because it's like we're going in circles. And so I'm about progress. And if I can't, if I don't see people wanting progress who look like me, it's hard for me to want to defend you. Um, and somebody said, and I hate to say it, but somebody was like, you know, when Booker T. Washington, when Booker T. Washington talked about the talented temp and people argued against that, he was talking about people who were able to transcend their mind to want to see greater, who want more. No, that was W.B. Du Bois. Uh, sorry, W.B. Du Bois. And then, Booker T. Washington's other side of the conversation. Other side. My yeah. bad. Okay. W.B. Du Bois to who, yeah, who, want, who want more. So with that being said is that it's like the people who have an interest in the nitty gritty show. We all have similar mindsets. The people, generally, people are into not into politics, not into politics, but will go out there and vote. The people who we should be reaching are the people who are not engaged into the nitty gritty show, or people who don't care about politics, and they are at house parties when we've already told them that social distancing is what you need to be doing right now during coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And these people don't want to change their mind. So at this point, it's like, well, what do you want me to do? I don't have any more energy to help somebody who doesn't want to help themselves. Um, good point and simple to it. Talk seems cheap, right? That came from Mamie. But then Chris brings up a good point. He said, being engaged is a lot of work. Why people like us have to get in positions of leadership to influence social and economic agendas. And that's true. I think it's important that that it has to work both ways, right? you got to understand the talented TIFF debate, right? W.B. Du Bois saying like, he knows there's that select group, that 10% that's gonna go want to do above and beyond, and like you support those people because it's kind of like, you know, like you know, one tie list all type situation. It don't work that way. Doesn't always work that way, and that's why you know I understand what Booker T was trying to say as far as you know engagement at a lower level to get more people involved in the process, you know, economic, you know, um, leadership and advancement, things of that nature. Um, it's a hard conversation, but we have to do it. Um, and I like what Chris is saying. He said, those like us have to shoulder a majority of the burden and just step in. Mm. And that's true. I mean, for those that have watched the um, Michelle Obama Becoming, she talks a lot about that. Just her hurt of the matter of people that just didn't come out and vote when it came time for Hillary. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, how you put, you know, when you get behind an agenda like Obama, her and her family directly, they put their life on the line. You know, when she's talking about her security detail and all the things they go, they go through, there's a lot, and I think we really honor, you can't just post a meme and be like, oh, Michelle, you know, she, she got it going on, oh, I want to love like Obama, but it's like, if you really want to love like the Obamas, you have to have a love not just for your mate or for your wife, but you have to have a love for people, you get what I'm saying, outside yourself, and we can't be selfish anymore. I mean, just think, if at any time Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, um, Frederick Douglass, um, Malcolm X, um, Kennedy... All these great people who died and, and lived their lives to the advancement of other people. What if they at some point was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm free. Yeah. I'm free. I don't really have to have the alpha suffrage movement and all this stuff that Frederick Douglass came up with. He's like, he could have just been like, you know what? Technically, I'm living a good life. But that was a time period where, where the collective agenda was promoted. Nowadays, it's about me, me, I, I, my brand, social media, look at what I'm doing. So it, it fully negates the collective of unity, the collective of, the, the collective of community. It, like the, the aura that we're in right now is about self. It's not about people. Yeah, and um, Lana made a good point. You were just talking about this earlier. She said that uh, we, like, whew, got to do the final sound effect, right? She says, but, um, she says her stepmom has had 12 people pass in D.C. from COVID um, because we didn't listen and, be, and it's because you need a trigger, right? And with the mod situation, uh, we have to be desensitized to it. And it's true because I think we're just so used to taking on all this hate, right? And then nothing happens, right? Nothing gets fixed. Um, we don't see change. Of all these murders from Trayvon all the way down to Sean Reed, right? 
only one person has actually been charged and convicted, and that was Botham Jean's killer. And I have a problem with that whole situation. The whole the whole stroke of her hair and all that. And, and, I, and I forgive you. you. That, was a, that was a BS. And that's another thing about us. We way too forgiving. We always talking about the Bible forgives. Forgiveness is for you, not for the other person. Meaning, I can forgive you, but I'm not about to hug the person that killed my brother. Oh, no, no, no. We got it all the way twisted. And that's the reason why people feel they can do us wrong. Because they're like, you know, black folks, they're going to forgive us. I mean, look at, how long, look at how long we treat them over the years. It's not like they have uprisings yet. They, and, haven't, and, they, haven't, they haven't attacked us yet. So. And, and something we need to learn from other Americans is that, you know, here we have been, we were enslaved for what, what, 247 plus years? Right, slaves, um, and we don't. Just recently, I seen some guys in Michigan, some people of color, protecting some of the um, lawmakers there with guns. Right, um, but of course, you know, in Michigan, you've had these militia groups, these these groups that would support like the Trump campaign. These types, they've been running around with guns at their hip just because the government. In the WHO and the CDC are telling them keep your behind at home so you don't die. Right? And they feel like their rights are being infringed upon. Well, how do you compare that to the Trail of Tears for um, Asian people or Native Americans? Or how do you compare that to the injustice brought upon black America still happening today? Laws still in place to help them kill us and hunt us down. You know, it's like if they feel like just because they're forced to be locked in the house and they're limited to how many paper towels and rolls of water or, or whatever they can get, then how much more infuriated? That's probably why they're afraid. They're kind of like, at any day, the black community going to snap. They're going to grab yeah, guns and they're going to do something. We ain't done it yet. Um, so here's some good points from IG. Um, Sold by Yulisa said, they don't care about forgiveness. They don't need it as they can do what they want to us with no re repercussions. Good point, and it's true. Um, Christopher said, I've learned through my work that it's a few. I'm okay with that now because I recognize the amount of work and level of sacrifice. True, good point. Um, Herman's also agree with these, um, that it's me, myself, and I. Uh, Lana says that God forgives. Go see him. I'm about that smoke. I'm all with you. And then Lana also said that, so I think police won't attack protesters because of their weaponry. Um, and that's true. Um, they won't do anything with them because they don't really want the smoke. And actually, I'm just going to bring it up right now uh, because it's appropriate. I'm working on something called the Black Act. And I, I, welcome, I welcome any help because it's not about one, the cops are trying to push a law. I'm just reaching out to anybody. Uh, if you're concerned with trying to put actionable things out there for, for, for legislation, then holler at me. I'd be happy to share with you what I have. Ooh. I've already reached out to some local... Um, politicians but I'll break it down there's three main parts I'll go into this de uh, in detail another time but basically the w first part is um, asking for reparations yes it's part of it and, and simple a thousand dollars a month for any person that is a descendant of American slavery right for the, uh, from the age of 18 to the day they die and we would keep this law in place for at least 247 years because that's how long we we're enslaved and that should help hopefully bridge some of the gap and the reason why we're looking at just reparations in the form of just a thousand dollar check or a ten thousand dollar check or something like that um, yearly or a thousand check thousand dollar check monthly is because I understand there's business grant laws and there's different ways for black folks to go to a school but it's not for everybody not everybody wants to go to school mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. let's just be real about that not everybody wants to um, uh, start a business. Some people just don't have the mindset for that. So the reason why the Black Act would call for reparations because I don't care if so and so down the street wants to buy J's. If that's what makes them feel better, cool. Not everybody's gonna do it, but we know Andrew Yang has already proved it through this uh, Democratic debate that a thousand dollars a month does a lot for any family, mm -hmm. right? Um, no matter how high or how low, and I think it's important that uh, we honor these folks and the stuff that we've done through this country with money. And you know what? There's a few industries we pull it from. You pull it from Wall Street. There's a di direct connection between Wall Street and also uh, with uh, people of uh, color and slavery. Uh, you take the money from tobacco. 
Um, that's one of the main um, crops used during slavery. So then the other ones to follow would be like cotton, sugar. Um, you would also look at various pieces of the housing community. And even at new industries such as the prison population, right? We know that from the 13th Amendment, that kind of like started the imprisonment of black people to try to get back free work. Okay. So you take money away from privatized prisons. My bad. Um, the second part um, is we would ask that there be better oversight over crimes, right? And we kind of already talked about this in the various threads, that anytime we see a disproportionate rate of arrest, charges, or convictions, that oversight that will be created within the federal level would start investigating these folks. And if they're found guilty, they themselves can face imprisonment. And if there is a fine charge, we take that money not from community funds, we take it from those police um, retirement funds. Because what happens is you create a culture that, hey, if you're going to affect my money, you're not going to allow your racist police officer or co-worker just to kill a black man in cold blood if it's going to be messing up your retirement. And then last but not least, we would work to abolish and state that where it applies, these stand your ground and these citizen arrest laws, get rid of them. Right. So that way, because the way citizens arrest is supposed to work is you're a, you're protected as a citizen to intervene with a felony that you see taking place. In this case, citizen arrest should never have a protected the McMichaels because they never seen the crime. No. That's why the dispatcher was saying, describe to me what you think this young man is doing wrong, which was nothing. So they should definitely face murder charges because what they did was murder an innocent black runner. Because you didn't see anything going wrong, you assume it took it on yourself to be a private eye. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little hype, right. getting a little excited. Let's read some of these comments. comments. And then we got to close that. All right. Uh, Trey, talk about he knows we're going to talk about it. We're going to go a little bit over. That's fine. Okay. We'll go a little over. We're going to 915. Um, Trey said uh, he wants to talk about this on the Xbox later. You already know we're going to talk about it in the chat. Um, also, um, going to our live feed, uh, Herman said the Black Act Awesome. I have... Lana says she has legislative language if I need it. Yes, I need all the help I can get so we can start presenting this to various uh, congresswomen and legislative pieces. Um, Lana said it's been really interesting, especially with the mask requirement. People feel entitled. Good point. Um, Lana said add the paper bag test because if you can discriminate against me or there's a visual immediate bias, I want reparations. Good point. Um, Lana said also private, public, and government should contribute money. Yes, we would definitely pull money from them as far as funding this $1,000 a month that people who are descendants of American slavery should get according to the Black I think Act. we need to get like a work group together, right? And we can do it, you know, via Zoom. And we just have a, a call, we get it drafted up, mm -hmm. and we start pushing it to different... Because um, like Juan said, what happens is when, when these politicians get into office, we always say... Well, we want things, we want to know what you're going to do for the black agenda. We have to stop asking them what they're going to do for the black agenda. We need to start proposing, this is what we drafted, this is what we want for the black agenda. Because now it puts the, the onus on them to make it happen. Versus them giving us lip service, like, well, you know, we'll talk about that. No. Yeah. Similar to when Dr. King went to Jackson and mm -hmm. said, I want voting rights. Yeah, like he had he a plan of action over and he was able to tell... He was able to tell Kennedy, he was able to tell Johnson, this is what I want. This is actionable. This is the result. When we just say schools need to be better, well, how do you measure that, right? Because they can just put air conditioning in there and they say, oh, now it's better. They can finally get you some new textbooks and say it's better. So you have to clearly define what is it that I want. And you have to utilize the system into knowing who do I go to to actionalize and to actually start drafting up legislation to be voted on in the House, right? I'm going to say zoom it out. Yeah, zoom it out. So we're going to do that soon. Let's start that up. Um, also, um, because I, let me, let's just start wrapping up. Um, I wanted to address um, Sean Reed, the military vet that was tased and killed. Now, I know a lot of you saw the video. And yeah, Sean was being a little bit of an ignorant side. Rest in peace. However... However, for those watching saying, well, he shouldn't have been driving fast. The cops shouldn't have been chasing him. At the same time, I used to be a police officer. Uh, the Fort Campbell Civilian Army Police Department. The only way you're supposed to use lethal force, and I've said it multiple times on this platform, you need two things present. Not just one of the two, both. I'm excited. I'm sorry. Y'all know I get excited about this, y'all. Y'all gotta excuse me. But you need two things present. One, you need the means to actually do lethal harm to somebody and the second thing is the intent 
to do serious bodily harm, um, including death, has to be present. When these cops are tasing someone um, who's running away, actually, if an assailant is running away, therefore, the intent is not there to do you harm. You get what I'm saying? Um, also, if he doesn't have a gun on him or if you have a positive ID one, then there is no reason to pull your gun out and shoot him. In the event with Sean Reed, they actually tased him and then they shot him 20 times. And guess what? His life caught these officers laughing about the situation. See, the Black Act would protect young men in that situation where true justice could be served and those guys would in turn go to jail. Or we would crush their police fund mm -hmm. and take money out of that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then to address those talking about black and black crime, the reason why we're not up in arms about Calvin Munderland, uh, Mun uh, Munderland, they call them duper, is because guess what? When a black person commits a crime, they're going to follow up the Justice Department and send those people to jail. The two people that they've uh, found in connection with that killing, they already picked them up in Texas. They got them returning back to Michigan already. That's what happens with black crime. When someone's black and they commit a crime, or shoot, if we even suspect them of a crime, they're going to be met with the full extent of the law. The issue is, outside of all these unarmed black men killings by the hands of police and these wannabe justice vigilantes, only one has been actually sentenced to any time. That's why we get so upset about white people or um, police officers killing unarmed black men because it's like we don't see justice enough there in, um, in, in that platform. Um, let's move along, I'm trying to get through it quick. Um, also, um, Breonna Taylor, that's another thing that's being investigated now in Louisville. She was shot by police. There's not a clear answer as to why. They're claiming they were met with gunfire. But as we've seen with the Ahmaud Arbery situation, they claim that he attacked these two white men. Now we've seen the video, and he didn't do that. They're always lying. Always lying. It's the same that we need to see video. It was very common sense with the Ahmad Arbery. He's, when they found him, obviously, all he might have had on him was, at best, a wallet and a phone. So if he was know. burglarizing something, why in the world would he be in a white t-shirt and red shorts? Nobody commits a crime in those colors. You're, you're being seen. So obviously, he had no attention. And about those string of burglaries, it's actually being researched. Um, Sean King put the information out first. There was no string of burglaries. None of this was happening. It was all made up and manufactured for to, to protect these two murderers out there. Who were and being nosy. It's at the core of who they are. They are nosy people. Just being nosy, just, not like, just mind your own business and leave folks alone. Black folks work out. That's the reason why we throw balls. When you're, I'm pretty sure these guys living in Georgia, they cheer for the Georgia, Bulldog, Georgia Bulldogs. And guess what? The Georgia Bulldogs is full of a bunch of black guys that can throw balls, run balls. They love it when you're athletic, but then want to be scared when they see you in your neighborhood. We just got to end the racism. Um, uh, before we leave, though, um, I do want to make some shout outs. Shout out to Mother's Day. Shout out to all the mothers. Shout out to my mom that you hear right here. Um, any uh, mother that's on right now. Shout out to all my mamas watching. Um, yeah, we appreciate y'all. And, uh, and, and, and shout out to anyone who's ever acted in a motherly capacity. So if you've been a mother to someone, if someone's relied on you um, for motherly counsel, you know, you're a mother in your own right. right? And, and let's, we celebrate you. And let us celebrate Andre Herrera who passed away. Little Richard, who passed away, and then what was the lady's name? Betty. Uh, Betty White passed away. Betty White well. passed away. So we want to keep their families in our prayers, and we want to commemorate them for all of their accomplishments. Did we say Andre Real too? Uh huh. I said it. Mm -hmm. Little right. Richard. Yes, I said it. Oh, okay. I, I sorry, I didn't catch it. My bad. My bad. Um, all right. Well. Oh, hold up. Uh, also, shout out again to the Stroman family. Uh, Richard Stroman. That's my grandfather. Uh, he passed about a month ago. We were finally able to bury him yesterday. Um, blessings to everyone that came out. We really couldn't have a lot of people due to COVID-19. And so with that in mind, anybody who has suffered a loss or any kind of death during COVID-19, my heart goes to you because while you try to give them the best send off as possible, it's hard during these times. So um, blessings to all of you. Uh, look, sorry that we kind of rushed towards the end. Uh, we did come on late. Um, but you know, thank you guys for being on. Um, if you didn't check out Versus, I've been playing Erica Badu and Jill Scott music because they had such an amazing battle. I was a little upset that Jill Scott didn't play this song, Golden. Um, this is a really dope track. It's off her um, Beautifully Human um, album that came out in 2004. Um, I really wish she had played this. This is a dope song. It's one of my favorite Jill Scott songs. Take it 
in my own freedom. See, girl. Oh, okay, okay. I'm about to put you on the spot again. You know, we've been having Cat sing. Matter of fact, I'm about to cut up a clip real soon. Cat was singing a few weeks back on our show um, when he was playing some Jill Scott The Way. Um, I'm going to cut that up for y'all to see. It's a cute little clip. Uh, we're going to have Cat sing more often. Also, look out for Soulbox, latest piece of, um, I guess you would say, content come from the Nitty Gritty Show. Uh, we should be releasing every Wednesday. This Wednesday will be the first one. Yep, yep. Okay, I know you got got some stuff you got to do, all right? So look, thank you guys for watching. We love all of you. Uh, please connect with us if you want to do more to help with the Black Act, right? Uh, we'll know. set up a Zoom Send meeting soon. Write us, hit me up at j.decosta at thenittygrittyshow.com and we'll do more with that. That information is at the end of this uh, it's video. Your girl on YouTube. And it's your boy Jay DeCosta. Together we are the, the Nitty Gritty. gritty. Alright, let me get up out of here because I know you're about to go crazy over here. Alright, thank you guys for watching. We love y'all. Yo, Miss Tiffy, how you doing? Alright, and video. See y'all.